Okay, hello, Mark here, and today I'm looking at an essential piece of equipment if you're using a mirrorless camera with legacy glass. Now, whether it be a Sony NEX or Olympus, or in my case, an EOS M, um, you're going to need some sort of adapter like this so you can put old glass on. I really like using um, Minolta glass, so that's what these three adapters are. These are EOS M to uh, Minolta SR mount, or more commonly called MD or even MC mount, but it's actually SR mount. And you know, I've been using these for you know a number of months now, so you know, I'm pretty sure I can comment on how good or bad they are. And basically, I've got the three different models that I found on the internet. There's this one that's got it's got a uh, recognizable by this fine. Uh, grip here and a very small button a very small release button there uh, this one it was a vodka brand but the brand it's just the name that they put on you know um, these are all made in china by the way md eos m just this is a generic one uh, the the button there is slightly bigger on this one and then probably the best one that i've got although it does have its faults um, is this one that, that has the mount on the base there. So if you're carrying a, a bigger lens, it's kind of a, in my opinion, I think this is quite an important feature, but it has its faults. So what I'll do, let's just, I have a lens here. This is a beer can lens, uh, quite a famous Minolta lens, and we'll just hook this up, basically red dot to red dot. And you do need to press this down to actually connect them properly. Bit of a design fault on all these ones. Um, and then that locks in place. It's not ideal if we have a look, if we, if we can see that. There's a bit of flex in this one. Um, this is probably the worst of the three. I wasn't, wasn't too happy with that, and I think this one as well, I actually had to modify it. It's actually got, if you look at that piece of metal in there that's moving, that's quite thin steel there, and I think I had to bend it. I had to pull it apart and bend that so it would actually lock into place, because um, I knew that one didn't lock into place at all. Now, the second one, again, it doesn't, it won't actually push on without pressing the button and then it locks in place okay. This one's a bit more robust. In fact, there's, there's not a lot of flex in that at all. And the final one, which has got, oh, I should show it in here. You can see that little locking mechanism Maybe you can't. Should be able to. That's that's again. That's quite thin steel in there. And this final one, it's got slightly beefier locking mechanism, and you can feel that the button's bigger. It's harder to push down. And it is the only one that you can connect. Let's find the red dot. When you connect it, you don't have to push the button down. You just push it on as as you would expect, normal mount. So. As far as the connection to the lens, um, this one is the better version. Now, all of them, they are pretty much the same connecting to the camera. They're all pretty solid. Uh, you know, it just match the dots up. As far as mounting onto the camera, these guys are all pretty solid. I haven't had any problems because there's no, no moving parts on the, the camera mount side there. Now, of course, um, there's no there's no uh, electronic linkages because these are manual lenses, of course, and nothing really to go wrong. So they're all made of metal too. They're not plastic. They're all metal. Uh, the back part is a single part piece, and then you can on all three you can unscrew the front bit and get access to the springs and stuff. Maybe with this loose one you could take it off and bend those springs a bit so it's a bit tighter. But with lightweight lenses this one's fine. This one's better with the heavier lenses and 
this one as well is pretty good too. Let me just put my cover back on there. Now the the one fault with this lens is that which really shows up if you're trying to do video work that movement in there and these screws are just really really flimsy and it's not really strong enough at all when you put for instance the beer can lens on um, it makes it very front heavy with it with a tiny camera on the other end and you know at first this was fine but these tiny little screws in here they're just tiny little phillips head screws just weren't quite good enough so yeah that's the most disappointing bit with this other than that it's a nice mount um, don't rely on this one for my bigger lens i've got a 300 millimeter lens and that's actually got a mount on the lens which is kind of essential but my beer can a bit of trouble with stability when i'm using that one I will modify this. I think I'm going to drill these, drill these out and put bigger bolts in there and really tighten it up and lock tight it and everything. Now, how do these go as far as accuracy? So we'll measure them here with a vernier scale, each one. This one is 25.1. Twenty five point two nine, and twenty five point three six. I have not had any problems achieving infinity focus, except this one was pretty close. Uh, with the beer can lens, I was right on infinity focus, and it is the shortest of all of them. But typically, you're old legacy glass is able to um, focus beyond infinity so if there's you know if there's slight variations in the actual distance here they're pretty much all the same anyway so there's no huge variations there so like i said they can be picked up on ebay and on amazon i might put a few links below if that helps people but you know, maybe under different brands, but they're all made in China. They are pretty cheaply made. You know, if they're not working properly, don't be afraid to unscrew them. At the top here, you can unscrew these and you can see pretty much how they work. They're pretty simple. Sometimes you need to bend the little arm a bit, particularly. I steer clear of this version. You know, it just doesn't have the professional look. And this metal looks a bit more robust, this shinier metal on these, these two, rather than this... Uh, Perhaps that's a softer aluminium, I'm not sure. But they are all metal. Um, the camera side is all pretty good. This one's a bit loose. And this one is a loose mount on the base. So if you see another brand that has a better mount, I'm interested in that. But I've seen this on all the, even Olympus, Olympus to FD lens, and Olympus to Nikkor, and you know, NEX to... I've seen this type of mount on a lot of cameras and it's just not good enough at all. So prices, you're looking at about $12, $13 for these, these two types and this one sells for a bit more, so, uh, something like $20 or so. There are more expensive versions there for $60 or more, but really it's just an adapter for $60. You can get three of these ones and if one of them doesn't work so well, so what? You don't use it so much. But, you know, for me, two out of three wasn't too bad, although I do have to find a solution to this mount, and I would like to see another version that has a stronger mount, because two tiny little screws is just not good enough at all. Okay, so what I just found was that these, where the holes are, where they connect to the base, there was a little bit of a excess metal from drilling from um, after they drilled these holes and I just cleaned it up just with a drill bit and my fingers just went like that and um, drilled a bit of that out so now that's a nice flat surface so maybe that'll mount a bit better 
to here and actually stop that, that pivoting. So I'm going to try with these same screws again because there is quite a lot of thread that goes into this piece of metal here and um, see how I go uh, before I go nuts and drill these holes out. Right, just for interest's sake, this is what it looks like with the um, main ring off. It's just four screws, comes off. You can see the little, they are responsible for holding the lens in place and they're quite loose. I could probably actually just tighten that as it is. Or maybe pull them out and bend them a bit so it's a bit more sturdy. But there's really not a lot to these. Like that little metal thing there, that's obviously the stop. Stops you turning it too far and this is the, the latch that locks it in place. There you go. A little tear down for you. So cheers, thanks for watching. Please check out my other channels, Biodiversity Shorts and RC Hacker if you're into that sort of thing. And I'll catch you next time.